All right. So the be- yesterday we kind of spent a lot of time working on this particular scatter plot with the line of fit, right? Okay, we even calculated residuals for each of these points. And if you think about it, what that residual is, is like this is the residual. This distance is the residual for that point. Right, it's essentially the distance between each point in the line. Everybody good so far? And what can we say about the residuals of everything on the top of the line? The line would be under predicted, right? But, but what what we do? What do we know about the values of all the residuals above the line? Positive. They'd be positive, and all the residuals below the line would be negative, right? So if I added together all of those residuals right now, is that a good measure of how far away the points are from the line? So for example, if I add this number, which would be like negative, let's go ahead and call that like negative, I don't know, it looks like it's maybe negative, more distance. I don't know, negative four. And this, and we'll call this one positive five. Five and negative four would make it look like the difference, but the distances those two are from the line is one. Is that a good idea? The positives and the negatives, and we add them together, what's going to happen? A positive plus a negative, they cancel, yeah? Okay, now, this was the line Miss Meister just made up. Do you guys think it's good? Mm-hmm. Sure? Is it the best? Mm-hmm. Could, could we do better? Probably. Probably, probably. Now, let's say I move this line closer to this point down here, because this is, this is definitely the furthest point, right? If I move the line closer to here, so I'm pulled on that right side of the line, what's going to happen to these distances? They're going to get larger. So moving closer to one point usually means we're moving further from other points. Does that make sense? So as we move a line around trying to find the best fitting line, essentially what happens is increasing one distance decreases other distances. So how do we decide where to do that? Well, what we want to do is minimize the total of the residuals, but not the total of just the, pot, the sum of the residuals. And in fact, if I have the best fitting line, the sum of my residuals will be zero. Okay, because I would have as many positives as I have negatives. Does that make sense? Okay, so instead what we do is we create something called a least squares line. And when we talk about least squares, imagine for each of these points, I draw a square, the length of the residual. What happens when I square something? Okay, so, so all those negative residuals become positive. Does this make sense? Okay, so the, when we have these like, we call these residual squares, and that's really all you need to know is uh, when we have residual squares and we find the best fitting, what we call the best fitting line, well, there's lots of best fitting lines. The one we're going to talk about today is the least squares regression line, and all the goal of that least squares is to minimize the total area of all those residual squares, okay? That's the only reason we call it the least squares regression line. All right, so when you guys get, you guys noticed on that review yesterday that you started, that I gave you that box with all those summary statistics, that was called a least squares regression analysis, okay? And from that is where we're going to most of the time find our equation of our line of best fit. So, There's some things about the least squares line. Remember how we kind of had the, we drew in the X bar and the Y bar, something kind of like that. 
That intersection of X bar and Y bar is contained in the least squares line. Okay? The slope of the least squares line is always the correlation. So remember, some of you may have I think it was this group that asked, is R the same thing as slope? It's not the same thing as slope. It's very much related to slope. Now, what do you guys know about slope in general? What is the slope of a line? Change in y over change in x. Instead of calling it change in y and change in x, are you guys cool if I call it variability of y over variability of x? So we're going to have sy, the standard deviation of the y-coordinates, over sx. And the symbol we typically use for slope is a b. The symbol we typically use for the y-intercept is A. Remember how we talked about or a couple of days ago? That's how we talked about how we write the equation of a line. Okay? So how do I find my y-intercept? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mean of my y's minus the slope times the mean of my x's. Now, I am not going to ask you about this on the actual test. You would have these formulas on the AP exam. I just haven't created your formula sheets yet. Cool? All right. Now, the y-intercept does not always have meaning. For example, what do we know about any y-intercept? Y-intercepts cross the y-axis, yes? In order to be, for a point to be on the y-axis, what does that really mean? Its x value has to equal zero. Its x value has to equal zero. Okay? So my y-intercept always has, is always going to be zero and then some number, the, that intercept. Okay? And sometimes x being zero does not make sense. For example, hey guys... Is my pace to run a mile ever going to equal zero? You guys with me? Okay. So sometimes y-intercepts don't make sense. Sometimes they don't actually apply. Remember yesterday we talked about interpolation and extrapolation? Okay. Are you with me that x equals zero would be some major extrapolation? Okay. That doesn't mean we can't interpret it when we need to. And we will get some practice doing that, but it doesn't always have value. The slope always means something, okay? Because it's talking about how our two variables change together, which is essentially their relationship. Okay, so slope is that rate of change between the two. So it's okay. And then what else do I got here? Da, 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 we've already talked about our square. Oh. Are you with me that I could take each of these, I could write out and make a dot plot of all the residuals? So, for instance, this one looks to be roughly positive 2. And this one looks to be 8. And this one looks to be 6. And so on. Could I make a dot plot of all of those? And, like, this one is negative 5. And so on. Okay? Now. S is just the standard deviation of my residuals, which essentially means how far my average distance is from zero. In this case, how far the point is from zero is how far the point is from the line. So the average prediction error, S ends up being my average prediction error. And the reason I point that out is when I give you one of those regression analyses, that's one of the things that's always going to be there. So how am I going to ask you about this stuff? Wait, wait. All right. You guys, we still have that data in our calculators, don't we? I'm pretty sure. See, I'm going to go to stat, edit, and it is in mine. So, guys, if you hit stat, error over to calc,
So before what we did was the one variable stats. Now we want to do something in different. Does anybody see anything that might help me come up with, re with the regression line? Regression. The one that says linear regression, yeah? And which one should we pick? There's two, right? Number four, number eight. Number eight looks more like how we've been writing stuff, but if you pick number four, it's still going to be just fine. Don't worry, because you're going to get the same numbers. Okay, so go ahead and pick number eight. It's going to say, hey, where, which list do we want to form a regression of? L1 and L2. And all those other things for now, just leave completely blank and just hit enter. So, now... Does some of you not have the R and R squared? Okay. Go ahead and hit the mode button. If you don't have the R and the R squared, hit mode. And if you scroll to the bottom, so there, somewhere it should say stat diagnostics. And you want to make sure that says on. Stat diagnostics on. You can find that in the mode menu. And then if you just hit enter again, you should get R and R square. We good? So you'll notice that it tells me that the equation of my line is Y equals A plus B X. And then it gives me values for A and values for B. So, So we might look at this and say y hat equals 255.56 plus negative 10.53x. If I had picked option number four, it would have given those in the different order, and the, but the slope would still be the negative 10.53. Okay? That's kind of what happens, is the number in front of the x will be the same. Now, I hate that answer for the equation. Not because it's messy, but because if you wrote down this answer, I would have to give you a P instead of an E on the free response. Would anybody like to guess why? Context. So, if we did it this way, we would have to say X equals pace. and y equals beats per minute. Now, if instead you just wanted to say from the beginning, BPM hat equals 255.56 minus 10.53 times pace, that would be fine. And this would get you an E if you just wrote the equation in context, which is technically, that's how I like to do it. And technically it's less writing things down <laughs> But I would accept either way as long as you, if you're going to use X and Y, just defining those variables, okay? How are we feeling about finding the line of fit? All right, now, if I gave you one of these regression tables, how could we find the line of fit? Looking at what the actual answer was, and looking at this table, what would you say? Do you guys remember the word coefficient? What does it mean? What's a coefficient? A number, a, a number in front of a variable, yeah? So guys, what is the number in front of the variable pace? Now, are you guys with me? Now, what does the word constant mean in math? What is a constant? It's a something that stays the same the whole time, or in some respects, a number without a variable. What's my y-intercept? It is a constant. So the number in front of the term that doesn't have a letter. Is this okay? So that coefficients column is how we're going to find our equation of a line. Is this okay? Of the least squares regression line. 
All right. Now, next, if I ask you to interpret the slope of this line, well, for starters, the slope, and I'm going to say B because that's how we do it in stats. If you just wrote the word slope out, that would be fine. Are you guys with me that, can I put that negative 10.53 over 1 without changing its value? Mm -hmm. All right. And you, we talked about slope is the change in y over the change in x, yes? So what was y again? What was my context for y? Beats per minute. And instead of change in x, I'm going to write change in pace. Is this okay? Why is it Because it's always going to be over 1. So if I need to change a number to a fraction, I can put it over 1. And the reason I want to change it to a fraction is I want to show it as change in y over change in x. Right? So I need a bottom number. If I asked you to write 2 as a fraction, you would call it 2 over 1. I asked you to write 5 as a fraction, you write it 5 over 1. So that, that 1 is always going to be my change in x. All right, so for every increase of one minute per mile. <coughs> Does that make sense so far? The change in pace being a one minute increase because it's a positive one. Okay. There is a predicted... underline that word predicted, decrease of 10.53 beats per minute of heart rate. I'll let you guys read that for a second and kind of make sense of it before we move on. How are we feeling? Okay, now, remember we said for the y-intercept that the x-coordinate is zero and the y-coordinate is whatever it is, so 255.56. What was x again? x was pace, y was beats per minute. Right, so if I needed to interpret this point, it would go something like if Meister ran a zero minute mile, her heart rate would be predicted. to be 255.56 beats per minute. This very obviously does not make sense because it would be sweet if I could run a zero minute mile, but that would also be equivalent to teleporting, okay? Which also, if you ask me for a, for a superpower, Teleporting is definitely it, because there's nothing I hate more than waiting to get from one place to the next. Like, riding in the car is the worst. Riding on a plane, the worst. It's so boring, you're just sitting there. I hate it. Can't sit still. It's the worst. All right. Uh, you guys notice I underlined those words predicted. Mm -hmm. Okay. The College Board is very, very clear. It, it does not like... Determ what they call, they label it deterministic language. So if I were to say, when Ms. Meister increases her pace by a minute, her pulse will go down by 10.53. It might not go down by 10.53. It might only be 10.2. And then the next minute, it could be 
You guys see what I'm saying? So it can't be de- that by using the word predicted, it's, it's kind of like using the word approximately. Is everybody good? All right. Just for fun, I'm going to point out we have two R squareds in the table. I know we kind of talked about this yesterday. You're going to always, always ignore the one that says adjusted. We're only going to deal with the R squared equals point, or 85.6%. Um, if R squared equals 0.856, how could I figure out R? Square root. Except for the value for R is not 0.93 here. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay. Let's go back for a second. Way, way, way back in the day, you learned that when you took the square root of both sides of an equation, that you should put a plus or minus in front of your answer. So, according to the equation, R squared equals 0.856, R could either equal positive 0.93 or negative 0.93. We happen to know from the get-go that this relationship is a negative relationship. How can I tell from the least squares regression line that this is a negative relationship? The slope is negative. The slope would be negative for a negative relationship. Wait, negative. The slope would be positive... For a positive relationship, yeah? Okay, so R is not equal to 0.93, it's equal to negative 0.93. Cool? And you have to use the slope of the line to tell you. All right? So that would be there is a strong negative... relationship between pace and heart rate. Sorry. All right. Guys, in terms of like studyability, this test will have a lot of interpretation on it, okay? This page has all the different possible things I might ask you to interpret. Is that okay? So in terms of all of these things where I'm like, interpret the slope, interpret the y-intercept, interpret r, I would pay attention to this page somehow to give yourself some little notes, okay? We talked about r squared the other day. Uh, we would say 85.56% of the variability. Remember, the line doesn't explain that I have a pulse. It explains why my pulse changes. Okay? And heart rate can be explained by pace, by the relationship with pace. And the last one, S. Do you guys see that S is equal to 5.46? Okay. We would interpret that by saying the regression model's average error in predicting heart rate. is, I said his, that's weird, is 5.46 beats per minute.
So if you're not good at memorizing, which is fair, that doesn't mean you won't be expected to understand these interpretations, okay? So this is something that between now and Tuesday, when you guys take the test over this stuff, okay? It's on Tuesday. Not today, Tuesday, obviously. All right? This is all stuff that I would expect you guys to be able to do. So you, if you, I would recommend studying this, okay? Um, topic 2.9 will.